welcome to this edition of KTN Prime. Thank you for joining us. I'm Nancy Kachingira. Welcome to the program. I'm Ben Kitili. Tonight we begin with what has become a harrowing annual ritual for residents of the county of Turkana. That's right. Several families have now resorted to eating dog meat as famine continues to ravage the vast county. Officials there say at least 30,000 people have fled to neighboring Uganda to escape the famine. Now, as it should be, that is our big story tonight. And we're going to start our coverage with senior North Rift reporter Mercy Kandier, who is in Turkana. The two women from Kakuma area in Turkana West had had enough. In the name of hunger, they ate dogs, the only resort they say they had. We found that they have roasted two puppies. They, they convinced to us they had eaten two, and they have roasted two, and the one was ready to be taken the following day. 10,000 residents in Turkana West alone are in dire need of food. Among them is Akai Emokua, a widow whose husband was killed by the Toposa bandits. Akai has lost three of her children. According to her relatives, they died because they had no food. So she traveled to Kakuma refugee camp to at least get food for her two remaining children. She too confessed of eating dog meat. <laughs> Akai is part of the internally displaced persons that moved back to Turkana after the post-election violence. The group used to receive relief food from the government. The last three months have seen them receive absolutely nothing. That, coupled with harsh climatic conditions, makes it hard for these IDPs to survive here. But for the rest, in line with their nomadic culture, they crossed borders to neighboring Uganda. Most of our animals, if not all, are across the border. So those who remain behind are people who are vulnerable. Around uh, 30,000 people, they are there with the animals and they are taken care, the, their security is taken care by the Uganda security. The dust proves too much, not only for our car, but for the villagers too. Nakurio village in Turkana Central is almost deserted. Empty manyatas as the wind blows, going with any hope of any rain. Many have left their homes in search of food and pasture. The drought now like a shadow befalling the county annually, leaving a region to be dependent on food aid. The doors of the houses here are made from recycled containers of relief food. Akuna saizika kwa kwa hiyo nyumba. Akuna ata jana, ata leo. Akuna. When villagers resort to eating ayongol, a wild fruit, then you know the drought has hit hard. The fruit that grows during the dry season becomes a daily meal here for both the young and old. This as the county governments seek long-term solutions, but the short-term solutions, especially for the elderly, remains the goodwill of fellow villagers who once in a while give a helping hand. Many of the elderly sit under the shade of the houses away from the scorching sun, but nothing much can be done to escape the hunger pangs. And as we continue to cover the story, this man comes with his identification card, thinking it's the government with relief for we disappoint him. Recently, just at, some two weeks ago, we had a meeting. A DSG met at the county level. And then they come up with some strategies on how best we can provide food to the needy. Among the long-term solutions include convincing residents to reduce the number of livestock they keep. A tough one for a region whose pride is in the number of livestock they keep. And when the day is done, Tomorrow, the county wakes up, knowing they will have to find ways to survive. Drought that hits Turkana County annually may be inevitable, but it is quite clear that the national and county government need to find solutions fast to this annual catastrophe. For those who feel the pinch of it most are the elderly, especially like Nangole here, who can't walk for miles to search for food. Masi Kandie Katien, Kalotum Village, Turkana Central. 
That was Mercy Kandia reporting on the dire situation in Turkana, and we will be speaking to her again later on in this bulletin. Now, amid the raging famine, several leaders from the region are now accusing the county government of failing to coordinate relief operations in the area. They spoke to KTN in Loima a few hours ago. There is some food which the national government they have sent to this county, about 47 bags, uh, 47, 4700 bags of maize and uh, three bags of beans for each sub county, seven sub counties, that's 18 bags and some uh, cooking oil. All that to date, we are that food it is still in the Lodua cereal board. There's no money for transportation of this food. The reason is the county government they are saying they have even a they don't have even a point to, uh, to transport this food to the destination. All that I'm uh, appealing, I am appealing the national government that whatever it has provided now is not enough. We came to the county government to ask if really they go their money. But to our astonishment, to our dismay, the county government said they, do not, they have not received anything like that. And they keep up to now, they will tell you they have never received that money. So the fate of the Turkana people has remained between the national government and the, and the, and the, and the county government because none of them wants to accept. From the happenings in Turkana that we are reporting tonight, you can, uh, SM, you can get in touch with us via social media platforms on Twitter. You can use the hashtag Save Turkana. Hashtag Save Turkana. Tell us what you think about the dire situation in the northern county of Kenya. Let's now bring in the governor of the county of Turkana, that is Joseph Nanok, who is joining us live on phone from the county of Turkana. Governor, it is, uh, it is not nice what is happening in the county of Turkana. It is happening again. Uh, we are reporting uh, 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 people who have had dog meat due to the famine that is ravaging that particular county. What, what is happening there, governor? Joe, thank you, uh, and it's good for me to call in now. Uh, five months ago, we, after a series of uh, consultations with partners and, and assessments that we had conducted, we declared an emergency in Turkana, and we began effort to mobilize partners and ourselves to provide uh, food and water and medicine. And uh, this is something we've been continuing with. Also, at a uh, very low phase, we've been tankering water, we've been buying off food from uh, the local market, but taking care that we don't buy off everything such that we create an artificial shortage. Uh, but there are also challenges we've been experiencing, particularly the National Cereal Board. Now, Governor, National... Governor, three members of Parliament, including yeah. James Lomenen of Turkana South, mm. Nicholas Ndikor of Turkana East, and uh, uh, Kuja Prota of Loima are accusing you of failing to coordinate relief, uh, relief efforts in the county of Turkana to avert this situation. What is your, what is your response Joe, to that? Joe, Joe I ca you can't accuse me of nothing because the food sitting in the cereal board is being managed by the Ministry of Devolution. We have asked them to release the food even for sale. We buy it. They have said they are not selling any food to us. Second, we ask them to release the food for us to distribute, and they have said they are not distributing. They, they are not releasing the food to us to, to, to distribute. So what we have done now is that we are making arrangement to go down to Kitale and Eldoret to purchase food direct from farmers because it looks like somebody somewhere in Nairobi wants to play politics with this food. So, so what you're saying is that the money is there, but uh, you cannot access the food because they, uh, those leaders, those three members of parliament are saying that uh, the money is, is, cannot be accounted for, and it was given by the uh, Ministry of Special Programs to be able to deal with this particular uh, calamity because it was foreseen by the Meteorological Department. So you are saying that the money is there. Ministry, Ministry of Devolution, I said Ministry of Devolution. You know, government processes work in a way that National Cereal Board can only release from the Strategic Grain Reserve based on a letter on a release letter that is coming from the permanent secretary or the cabinet secretary of the ministry uh, of the relevant ministry that has not been done to date 
Now, uh, what is happening is that uh, the ministry itself is, is beginning a relief distribution using the chief system tomorrow in areas where we were distributing food two weeks ago. Totally disjointed uh, way of doing it. So, Governor, what are you doing on your end as a county government of Turkana to be able to correct this situation? So what I'm saying is that I have been in discussion with the Cabinet Secretary, Anu Igoro. I have been in discussion with the PS Congela, with the partners on the ground. And now we are also moving, since we cannot access the food that is sitting in cereal board, what we are now doing is we are calling an emergency uh, meeting tomorrow of my cabinet, and we will be procuring food direct from the farmers themselves. Thank you, Governor. That is... Just for Nanok, the governor of the county of Tukana, speaking to us live on phone from the county of Tukana. That is our top story tonight, where uh, famine is continuing to ravage the county of Tukana. Let's now bring you uh, some of the details, uh, some of the history, part of the history of the county of Tukana, as far as famine and the drought episode is concerned. This dates way back to 1925, but the first major drought in this particular part of Kenya happened in 1952, in which 61% of livestock in that particular part died. Then, almost a decade later, in 1960, another big drought happened in Turkana, where 55% of livestock, which is the main livelihood of the population there, died. And then in 1970, 54% uh, of livestock in that particular part of the uh, country died following yet another big drought. Now, according to government statistics, is that uh, re livestock rearing, of course, in the form of pastoralism is the main uh, source of livelihood in that particular county, that particular part of the country. 60%, more than 60% accounting for that particular uh, population. Now, 1980, another big drought happened in Turkana, where 65% of livestock in that particular part of the country died. In 1990, again, another big drought uh, still uh, led to another food crisis in Turkana. 53% of livestock died. Then in 2000, 63% of livestock was killed from another drought. Now, in the last 10 years in the last decade, there have been drought episodes in 2001, 2003, 2006, 2009, and latest in 2011. It happened between uh, mid-2011 to mid-2012. This is the most memorable one, which, of course, uh, led to mortality rates among all species of livestock in that particular part of the country to rise from 6.2% to 9.77%. It was, uh, it ravaged uh, the entire Horn of Africa. It was known as, it was said to be the biggest uh, drought in 60 years, uh, leading to a food crisis across uh, Somalia, Djibouti, Ethiopia, and of course in Turkana here in Kenya, leading to that very famous Kenyans for Kenya campaign, which galvanized the national Kenyans uh, but raised funds to be able to help their starving countrymen. That uh, particular campaign, of course, uh, managing to garner more than 600 million Kenya shillings. That was almost two and a half years ago, Nance. And here we are again today. Of course, yes. Ben, the question has to be asked, weren't there mid- and long-term solutions being looked at? Because just like you said, once again, we are facing a crisis. Exactly. That money was for both for immediate relief, mm -hmm. food, and for viable long-term solutions to be able to address food security in that particular county. Now, the question is, was that money used wisely? Where are the long-term solutions? And, of course, you can weigh in on this discussion. Use the hashtag SavingTukana on Twitter. We look forward to hearing what you have to say. Now, as we did mention, this famine is only the latest in a region that has witnessed at least 28 major droughts in the last century. But now it is emerging that the government was warned repeatedly by various organizations that the famine would come. So, just what will it take to save Turkana from the annual agony? KTN's Wilkes Tanyabwa spoke to several experts and now reports on some of their insights. 
Turkana is hungry, yet the faces of hunger staring out at the world remind the country of other years and other famines that have brought the region to its knees. In 2011, it was reported that 3.75 million people in 13 districts were facing hunger as the worst famine in 60 years swept over the Horn of Africa region. Children grappled with malnutrition and thousands of cattle died. Kenyans, moved by the plight of the starving, banded together under an initiative dubbed Kenyans for Kenya. The target was an ambitious 1 billion shillings. The funds would be used to feed the hungry while setting up long-term projects in order to ensure food security in the region. This is the oil from Gambia, oil in the Turkana basin. The next year brought good tidings to the people of Turkana. Oil deposits were discovered in the county. Later, a huge water source was discovered in Turkana, enough to supply the country for 70 years. The government announced plans to tap the water and use it to irrigate the land and produce food. The food situation there is heartbreaking. To see on one end in Turkana, people dying of hunger, and the other end where irrigation has started, there's lots of food just about to be harvested in a few weeks' time. And that tells us they have productive soils. The only issue we need to sort out largely is the issue of water. Actually, Trukana holds the key to our food security. If only we can tap into that potential. They are vast land. There are people willing to work. And they have the most scarce resource everywhere, water. Can we begin tapping into this and making maximum use of it? But tapping the water requires an infusion of funds and months down the line, Turkana is hungry again and the finger pointing is just beginning. A section of analysts blame the government for failing to use key information provided by various bodies tasked with sounding the alarm. The Metrological Department allegedly warned in October that Turkana was likely to face drought after the short rains failed. The National Drought Management Authority says it has been working to avoid a situation similar to that experienced in 2011. We need to listen because for those who listened are reaping the fruits. For those who didn't listen right now are suffering and therefore as a country and as individuals we need to change our behavior to what we are told we need to be more we need to take action and do what is needful rather than speculate and try to assume and yet the information we are trying to rely on is not based on any scientific facts those who subscribe to a different school of thought point out that it is difficult for government services to reach Turkana residents given that they are scattered across a wide area. These analysts suggest that the pastoralists move closer together, an undertaking that is difficult owing to the nomadic practices of residents in the region. A Vision 2030 report compiled by the Planning Ministry under former Minister Wycliffe Oparanya appeared to acknowledge the challenges facing arid regions. Regions. It suggested that drought periods should be anticipated and managed and observed that drought represents a failure in development, meaning that the country's drought response is still not timely. It then proposed the establishment of a national drought contingency fund linked with the National Drought Management Authority so that resources are available at the time they are most needed. Yet as the year begins, 120 villages in Turkana are hungry again begging the question has the government failed to Kana? Wilkes Danyabwa KTN